Let's go to the other side of the state, Fort Myers Beach and the surrounding area, seeing massive flooding and had winds up to 120 miles per hour last night. Fort Myers Beach Mayor Dan Allers joins us now. Mr. Mayor, uh, Fort Myers has been through so much over the last few years. How would you characterize what you went through last night and what are you seeing today? Well, this is our fifth storm in two years, so uh, to say we're battle-tested, I guess, would be an understatement. The sun just came up. We've been down here since about 3 o'clock this morning. Uh, the pictures you're seeing there of Margaritaville, some of the stuff we were able to get when we first got down here this morning. Um, it's, it's worse than Helene, uh, but not as bad as Ian, obviously. So we're thankful that everybody took us serious when we said evacuate. Um, it's really sped up the process for search and rescue for our fire department which will allow us to get our residents back on island and start the cleanup sooner than we normally would. So we just want to take a second to thank everyone for heeding the warning and getting off the island when they did. And you were out there uh, warning the public, Mr. Mayor. Uh, what, what's your immediate concern right now as, as the sun is up now? Uh, our immediate concern is getting the road open so that we can get water restored and get power back on so we can get our residents back on. They're patiently waiting off island, I'm sure, to... Uh, to get on the island, we've got water hopefully in the middle of the day. By the end of the day, we can get that restored. Uh, we haven't got an update yet from FPL to see exactly when we can get some power. Uh, but those are our two biggest concerns right now is to get our main boulevard, Estero Boulevard, cleared off to get people back here as soon as they possibly can. Uh, Mr. Mayor, what about uh, cell phone towers? Because I, I know the electricity is out in many cases. Uh, but what about once people get there, they're going to expect their phone to work. Will it? Um, so far, mine has worked. I'm actually talking to you on it right now. So, so far, it's it's working. Um, I don't know if their backup generator took water or not. I haven't been able to get by the tower that's on the island to see if that's, the generator is still running. Uh, depending on where you're at on the island, well, some ends got a little, one end got more than the other, um, and they're kind of in the middle. But that's right about where that house was that came off its stilts. So, uh, now we've got some daylight, we'll be able to really assess what we've got to deal with and, and get it cleaning up as fast as we can. Yeah, I mean, when you compare the storm to Ian, Ian was two years ago when we were reporting on that, there was so much water. And that was probably your biggest problem, right? So when you compare these two, you say this one overnight was not as bad as Ian. Was it because of the water damage with Ian? Well, it wasn't the amount, yes. You know, Ian, we had 15 to 17 feet of storm surge. Right. Best guess right now, we were probably in that 6 to 10 range, depending on where you're at on the island. Um, again, it's daylight now. We'll get a better assessment. I don't know if you can see it behind me, but there's a boat that floated to the park from uh, one of our marinas here, which is a couple, two, three blocks away. So there was obviously a significant amount of water here that moved a lot of things around and shifted houses off their off their pilings. So uh, there, w there was quite a water surge event here. Obviously, probably not as bad as our, our sister barrier islands to the north. Uh, we, you know, we pray for them and we understand what they're going through, uh, having to take this, this storm, you know, on the chin like right. we did two years ago. Um, we'll, we'll get our mess cleaned up and help them as soon as we can. Safe to say the worst is over. As I look around, I don't see the wind. I don't see any rain. So it's gone? Yeah, the, the water has receded off the island. We do still have standing water on some of the side streets. Um, as tide is going down here, we'll start to see some of that drain out. Um, then we'll be able to really see what's laying in the, on the ground and get, get those wires right. out of the way. and and get it cleaned up so people can drive onto the island. Sure. Mr. Mayor, uh, before the storm, there was a worry that there was so much debris in a number of West Coast towns from Helene, uh, still out on the streets waiting to get carted off by debris haulers. Uh, did you guys have that problem? Because once you have a, a hurricane come through with 120-mile-per-hour winds, those just become gigantic flying projectiles. Yeah, we were fortunate. We, we pulled two of our contractors that we have doing other projects, stormwater projects and beach renourishment projects on the island to, to assist with removing a lot of this sand. Our partners at Lee County brought a lot of their trucks and equipment down, plus our staff. So I'd say we had about 90 to 95 percent of the, uh, the Helena right. debris picked up before, uh, before this storm hit. So we were fortunate in that, that aspect, but we didn't quite get it all. All right, All right. Uh, Mr. Mayor, thanks so much. The mayor of Tampa said, don't come back yet. Check our website. We'll tell you when we're ready. For you, for people, I wonder if they can go back if they yeah. live in the Fort Myers area. I think we lost him. I think you know what he was saying early? Uh, the roads weren't clear yet. Right. That's right. Yeah. That, might, that might be the answer.